Well, hello again, everybody. This is Rose, and I am shooting, I believe it's part three, of the Japanese Princess or Japanese Geisha series. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to show you, I have a drafting table set up here. Um, and that's what I usually work on. But before I was given the drafting table by my very good friend Don, I had gone to um, Michael's and I had purchased this tabletop easel. And I'm just going to quickly show you. It, uh, it's, it's made of a very light wood. It can stand pretty much upright, as you see here. Or it can, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six different steps. And of course, you can also lay it down flat. So you can lay it there, you can angle it there, you can angle it there, there, or depending on the project you're working on and your preference. Okay, uh, the last one is flat, which if you're going to work flat, there's really no sense in, it, in an easel. But I'm going to set it up um, not fully upright, but that's about a 45 degree angle, angle I would say. And um, so my table, I measured it, and then I promptly forgot the measurements. Uh, my dog got at my pocket tape measure, so I'm going to have to get another one at Lee Valley. Um, okay, so mine is 76 centimeters, which is 30 inches by uh, 19 and a half inches high. Which is about 50 centimeters. Okay, and now this, this does not retract past about 46 now. Anyway, doesn't matter. Don't need it again. Uh, well, I might, so I'll just have it handy here. Okay, so this is good for working on pretty much any size diamond painting. You could make this work, okay? Um, with a, and, and I say that because there is a little bit of a lip here. I'll just I'll turn it sideways. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little bit of a lip here. And so on this lip, you can attach a bigger board if you want to. So for example, I, um, I have this, it's a backing from a poster frame. And let's say I want to work on the Japanese princess on this. Um, let's just see how big is. So she is actually, if I wanted to work on her right side up, whoops, okay, then this tabletop easel is plenty big enough. But let's say I wanted to work on a painting that she's uh, 90 centimeters high. So let's say I wanted to work on a diamond painting that was 90 centimeters wide. Well, I could simply put this poster frame, which is 24 by 36 inches, I believe. Put this on here um, and attach my attach my um, Diamond painting to the board with clip. Now I got these at uh, the dollar store. You can buy the plastic ones that they use for beach towels on cruise ships. Um, whatever you're comfortable with. I saw another video where uh, the person used blue tack to attach the diamond painting to her easel. Uh, and, you know, she, she took fairly substantial gobs of, of the blue tack and just stuck a few near the top to hold the diamond painting in place so that it didn't slide down. 
Okay, so now this, actually, the, the entire work surface is covered. But let's say it was a 90 by 120, okay, or a 90 by 150. I would actually be able to, uh, like, and so I can work on this without ever having to roll the canvas over the back of the easel. But let's say, let's just imagine now, that what I've got, imagine this is twice as wide, okay? So, um, first off, I would probably, you might not need a bigger um, backing board uh, because you don't, you can just move the painting so that there's always a piece of it that's on your adjusted workspace, work surface. Um, so at first, of course, you can just clip it on here and work um, on whatever area you want. Now, it's, it's going to be hard, unless you're standing, and you don't want to be standing for hours on end, to be drilling up here. So how do you do that? Well, what I do is I turn the painting upside down. This is actually upside down already. Um, so what I do is, let's say I want to work from the top of the painting down. So I've got this foam roller. Uh, okay, let me talk about foam rollers. There are different kinds of foam rollers. So this one, um, I bought, again, I'm going to turn my camera around a little bit. I bought the foam roller that's on the edge of the drafting table over there from the dollar store. And it has a hole in the middle, and they store them straight upright in, uh, in bins uh, or barrels or whatever. And so what you get is a foam roller that is wide, like that's straight, and that um, when you cut through it, uh, it'll actually grip onto whatever it is that you clip it onto. So my tabletop there is about an inch thick, okay? This over here, okay, so um, I only bought one foam roller uh, or one uh, pool noodle at um, at the dollar store last, last fall. And then by the time I went back and decided, oh, I want some more, um, they weren't selling them anymore because it, Pippi hears children outside, so she's barking. Let's just... Pippi, Pippi, quiet, honey. Quiet, Pippi, shh, quiet, baby. Okay, so they were out. Uh, they put them away for the season, and so I wasn't able to buy them, so I had to order off of eBay. And so instead of paying like a buck twenty-five for a pool noodle, I ended up paying, I think, three forty-nine each for two pool noodles. So, I mean, they're the same length, but... Um, now, I've got my finger covering it for a reason, and I'll tell you why in a second. There's no hole in the middle. So, um, and they come all, you know, folded up uh, for packing purposes. It was all rolled up into a ball. Um, I bought two of them. So this one here, as you see, is still crooked. And I've been trying to straighten it out for a long time. But anyway, we're just going to ignore that. For the purposes of this video, we're going to say that this is um, a pool noodle that I bought at the dollar store with a hole in it. Okay, so uh, the first thing you do is you cut a little slit all the way along the length of your pool noodle down to the center core. All right, I didn't cut this very straight. Oh, well. Um, those of you who know me know I don't stress about little things. So what am I going to do? I need to work on the bottom of my diamond painting, or the top of my diamond painting, but I don't want to, you know, have it being folded over the, uh, like bent over the top of the, uh, of the thing there. So now I tried two different things to do this. So I, I tried because I wanted to put it on the easel itself. And so because there was no hole in the middle, when I cut a slit, it wouldn't stay. Like it just, it popped off of the end. So what I did was I cut like a bit of a trench 
the length of the pool noodle. And with that, it would actually stay on the edge of the, um, of the easel itself. But I want this to just hang on the poster board. Okay, so what am I going to do? Here's what I'm going to do. Take this off again. Just going to put that on the chair. And so what I'm going to do is just push this down where I've got the cut. And again, it's easier if there's a hole in the middle of the pool noodle. Just attach this here. on this poster board. This is not a perfect science. And again, I wish I had the right kind of pool noodle, but you know what? You just make do. And if you had a really large piece, you could put a couple of pool noodles and have them, you know, have them hanging off the side there. So, okay, so I want to work on this diamond pane. So what do I do? I put that up to the height that is going to be comfortable for me. And so that I don't have to bend over. I don't want to be bending over. Because when you're hunching, that's when your shoulders start to hurt. Your neck starts to hurt. You're, you know, because you're trying to get down close enough to see what you're doing. So at this, at this level... Um, I can I can diamond paint well. I don't want to I don't want to be raising my arm up either because that's going to strain that's going to strain my shoulder doing this all the time. I want to actually be working uh, so that my arms are not having to reach a lot. So I actually want to bring this down to about here. Okay. Um, and so now all I do is I. I what I do is I start on the left-hand side of whatever um, strip I'm drilling, and I drill all the way across, but I do it one strip of paper at a time. So I would pull this back, and I'm a little bit anal, and I would pull this back exactly three inches from the top of the painting. And I do exactly three inches because this part of my hand is, surprise, surprise, three inches. Just, it's two and a half inches. So the palm of my hand is about two and a half inches. So when I rest the side of my hand, I can lift the side of my hand up and it's never going to be touching um, the adhesive. Whereas if I do four inches, because I have done four inches before, that's too much, and what happens is that my hand is touching the adhesive, and that's going to affect the stickiness of the adhesive when you're doing that hundreds or thousands of times. So for me, the optimal width or height that I work on at a time is three inches. For you, it might be different. Um, you know, if you have gigantic hands, well, you can work on four or five inches at a time. All right. Now, those of you who saw me do the unboxing for this know that I slit the canvas accidentally <laughs> when I was opening it. So, 12, 11, 10, 9. So that's the 3 inches right there. Now, on my tabletop... Um, like my table. This is, it's officially called a dining room table. It's not actually a dining room table for me because I live alone. So I usually eat at the uh, counter, which has like a bar um, that I sit at. Uh, this table gets used maybe once or twice a year if my daughter's in town uh, for a holiday, okay? And then... Uh, and then I take off this plastic and all this covering and stuff like that. Because what it gets used for the rest of the year, it's my work table. I've got my laptop here. I've got my printer here. And my cat eats on this table. I have to feed the cat on the table. Well, the other cat eats on another table. Um, 
I have to feed the cat on the table. For those of you who are wondering, why the hell would she do that? Because I have a dog who would eat the dog, the cat food, if it was on the floor. The dog can't climb up. The cats can. So, okay. So I roll this up. And now all I need is my drills, right? So, now I have I have a drill container that I actually did stick blue tack to. This is old blue tack and it's it's uh, kind of dirty at this point, but so I'm just I'm just removing one layer of blue tack from it so that there's some sticky. Uh, you know what? I'll just pull it off. It's still very very sticky on the uh, the part that's adhered to. Let's see, does that? No. Yeah, okay, that was stick. Uh, if you had if you have blue tack, you can use it to stick your drill tray onto your surface, okay? And, and well, if the sticky tack is actually uh, sticky, uh, mine has all kinds of um, debris on it, so it's not that sticky. Let's get rid of some of this debris. And I want it to keep it as, as um, as flat as possible, so I have the back balls up. Okay, so let's get some drills, shall we? Uh, I know you can't see all of this, but that's okay. So uh, those of you who watched my organizing video, I've got all my drills organized here. Uh, according to uh, the symbol, so that I'll be able to find them quickly. Um, so I need my tools. Now I use a Silhouette pick-me-up pen um, because uh, I used to get cramping in my fingers and from using uh, this kind of drill pen. You see that? Yeah, okay. Um, so I used to get cramping in my fingers from using this kind of drill pen because it's a little too narrow for me to hold comfortably. Um, and so I was actually cutting. Uh, when you get a foam core for your diamond paintings that has a little hole in the center, this one does. You can't see it too well probably, but this one does have a little hole in the center. You can actually jam that puppy onto your drill pen. And, well, let me do it. Let me get my scissors. Oh, I had them here because I knew I was going to do this. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of foam core about that big. It can be less, doesn't matter. And then I just take my drill pen. Okay, so I'm going to stand on the other side of the camera so I can, so I can see what you can see. And I just jam my pen in there. There we go. All right. And now I've got a big, fat surface that I can hold on to. And my fingers are not going to get cramped. And it's soft and cushy. And it's just, it's lovely. Okay. So there's my drill pen. I got a three-placer on the end because I have not learned how to use a um, bigger multi-placer than a three-placer. Okay, so let's just orient this a little bit differently. Just ignore all the other crap I've got on my table. Um, all you really need to be able to see is that part right there. Okay. So, now some of you might not feel comfortable having this attached here. I probably would not feel comfortable having this attached here because if it slides off when you've got it angled up so high, um, you're going to have drills all over the floor or the carpet or whatever, and that may not be 
the way you want to start your day. Um, let me get something else that I need. Okay, so I happen to have my computer right here, so this will be easy. I just plug the light pad into the computer. Where's the USB? There it is. Okay, so this should work. There we go. Okay, perfect. All right, so I find that the light pad then will help me to work uh, because I started off without a light pad. I think I did my first two or three 30 by 40 diamond paintings without a light pad. And then I stopped that nonsense because uh, it was just, I was straining my eyes so much to see. So with uh, the light pad, I don't have that problem. Now, uh, I don't like this, so uh, it's easy enough just to get, let me get something. I have silicone baking sheets that I use for all sorts of stuff. And uh, I love them because they're non-stick. Whoops. All right, I don't want everything to go crashing down. Uh, and they're very forgiving. Let's try something else. Now you might want to find a way to secure your uh, work surface if you're extending the work surface on your easel um, so that you don't risk what I just almost risked. So I'm not going to get too fancy with this because I'm setting this up here because I want to show you how to work, how you can work on diamond paintings without hurting yourself. I don't want you hurting your hands. I don't want you hurting your fingers. I don't want you hurting your shoulders or your neck or your back. So try to maintain the best posture while you're diamond painting. And to do that, it's important that you have a chair that's the right height for the surface that you're working on that you're not trying to reach too much so I think that might still be a little bit too much of a reach um, and and you you also don't want to have like tons of layers so find something like you can even just tape a piece of paper on here to uh, you know cut down on the glare um, make sure you've got a pen that uh, if, if you find it uncomfortable to hold one of the, the pink drilling pens, they do have the little soft um, cushies that come with some kits. You can buy those cushies on uh, eBay or Amazon or AliExpress as well. Um, but if you've got foam rollers around, the foam rollers are great. They don't last forever. After a little while, they'll start, like after a few days of drilling, you'll find they start breaking down. That's fine. You cut another piece and you got a brand new foam roller. So, um, so let's, let's just start drilling this. And I, okay. So, so I, I would start drilling down here. Um, and what I, what I will do when I work on this painting over on my drafting table is I'll do this section and then I'll do this section. And then I'll do another three inches and another three inches and then another three inches and another three inches. Okay, so I will do nine inches because at that point I'll be able to turn this around and work on it on my drafting table because I have a clamp on my drafting table that um, will actually hold the painting down onto the surface. And, um, and then I don't have to worry about it sliding around, okay? Um, because this gets pretty heavy after a while when you start adding diamonds. And so if I were to work on, let's say, nine inches of this, it would probably start uh, sliding down. So that's why you want to have some blue tack or you want to have some clips or whatever um, 
to attach your diamond painting to uh, your work surface. All right. So, um, oh, oh, ah, okay. So this is why you want to make sure that this is going to be secure. Um, and it's probably a good idea to have the diamond painting close to the edge. So I'm just going to, okay, this is not the best size clip for this. I want a clip a little bit bigger than that, but this will work. So let's say I was working on, and okay, we don't need this right now. Um, let's say I was working on uh, something that was 90 by 150. Even 90 centimeters, that's 45 centimeters that I would be, um, hold on, I gotta find my measuring tape again. That's 45 centimeters to get to the center of the diamond painting. And 45 centimeters is right here. This is 45 centimeters. So even if I was to bring this down, one of my cats is sneezing. Oops, I'm gonna cover this up now. Okay. Even if I was to bring this down to the uh, to the bottom here, uh, and and of course you can you can bring it down below. You just want to make sure that if the area has been drilled, you want to be really careful not to um, fold it. So again, you'd want to. Well, this is a small foam roller, but you'd want to get another pool noodle. And you'd want to wrap your ah, you want to wrap your completed work around the pool noodle so that it's smooth and it's not going to get pressed against your body over the edge of the table or whatever. Um, and then you can just sort of rest that here, okay, and work on it. Let's say it was. Uh, so you're working on a 90 by, um, by 100, and let's say you don't want all of the, you know, the, the, like if you're working on this section here, you don't necessarily want this hanging off the side. Well, you can turn your painting sideways, okay? And if you want, you can, you can drill across this way. There is no rule about how to drill a diamond painting. You just drill it according to whatever makes you comfortable, whatever works for your body and for your work area. Um, there, so if I was going to be working on a diamond painting that uh, let's say they, they ran this, well, let's say it was a, a 60 by 120 or something like that. And, and I wanted to lay it this way so that it widthwise, I could roll the ends around foam rollers. Okay. And I could, I could, and I could work on a small surface by doing that. You have to have a way to attach your foam rollers so that they don't, you know, fall off. And, and you have to keep your painting attached, which if you've got a pool noodle with a hole in it, these clips or whatever clip you're using fits right into the middle and you can clamp your painting to the foam roller. You cut the foam roller to, to the size of your painting and then you can actually just clip it all together, okay? Um, and, and that way you've got a nice uh, round edge and and you're not hurting your painting and then as you finish this side like let's say you're working you're working along this way and you're working up and down whatever you choose to do because there's no magical way to do it it's whatever works for you you can roll the finished edge around a pool noodle as well and again you want to be very careful not to not to uh crease it to the point where diamonds will start popping off because that you know, that's not, that's not something you want to see. Um, but so that, so you're saying, but how am I going to do that? Because, hold on, I've got some cat litter here. Oh, my goodness. That's what happens when you've got cats. Okay. Um, the, 
the, the, the strips are going this way. How am I going to work on my diamond paint? Well, the strips are going that way, but there's nothing saying you can't cut, you can't cut pieces that will work for you. So you can, you can use, um, I use an X-Acto knife and I just very lightly score the area that I want to expose. Um, and I either fold the paper up or down or sideways or whatever, uh, or I just cut it out completely. Doesn't matter. I mean, once you've drilled an area, you really don't need any paper to cover it anymore. And so you can work on any piece of your diamond painting that you want, just simply by, you know, you take a ruler, um, take your exacto knife. Now I am not going to be actually cutting this, okay? But let's say I wanted to work on, for whatever reason, I wanted to work on this area right here. Uh, let's say I had a, a small work area and I have a very large diamond painting. And take that. And I've got my painting rolled on uh, foam rollers on both sides. So I've got, you know, like whatever, 12, 12 inches or something. And I want to work on, you'll just have to imagine that I have another foam roller here, okay? Um, and I want to work on this area. Well, and here's, here's where the seam in the uh, paper is. So I would just cut down very lightly, for me, three inches. And then I go across, and then I cut back up. And then I would very carefully lift this piece off. And then I would drill this area. Um, and doing this, I think you would find that you could work on any size of a diamond painting, just simply by turning it as you need to. And, okay, so let's say, again, imagine this is twice as long as it is. Um, that's the, okay. Um, imagine this diamond painting is twice as long as it, as it is. I actually have one that's longer than this, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, we're going to use our imagination. So, um, so let's say you're now, you, you've got this and it's hanging over the top. You've done all this part. Let's say you've done two about here. It's, it's rolled over the top of your work area, but it extends another foot and a half or two feet down beyond the edge of your work area. Well, again, that's where you would take your foam roller, you would roll that up. Gently like that. And then you would lay it down on your workspace, or you could lay it in your lap if you wanted to, and just um, again, let's let's ignore let's ignore that. You could just rest it in your lap. And if you're resting it in your lap, you don't necessarily need a foam roller. What you don't want to do on a piece that has had um, diamonds put on it is you don't ever want to be pressing it against a corner of any kind, okay? So it would not work for me to be working like this and, and that, well, I would pull this back a little bit uh, so that I, I didn't have to push my body up against the corner here. But I would want to be very, very careful that I wasn't... Um, pressing up against this. So what could you do? Well, you take another one of your uh, pool noodles uh, that has the hole in the center, you cut a slit in it, and you know whether you're working on your dining table or your uh, kitchen counter or a little work surface, whatever you've got, um, some people, they just work on a, like a, uh, a TV table or something like that. Uh, Ella, for example, she has this TV table that she bought at Walmart. Um, it's just a black thing. It's like maybe 18 by 12 inches or something like that. And what she does is she puts boards on top of it. Now, she does work flat. They're not angled. Uh, I don't know how she does that for her back, but anyway. 
Um, but she puts, she puts a board down uh, and that will extend her work surface as much as she needs it extended. And you never actually have to have a work surface that's more than about a foot, foot and a half deep. Because with the foam, uh, foam rollers on each end of the work surface, you can make sure that your diamond painting can hang each way and that it'll never uh, crease. And, um, and so you can, you can work to your heart's content and bring it down as far as you like, push it up as far as you like. She's working on one called the Bamboo Path, and that sucker, I think it's two meters, uh, so 200 centimeters, something like that, one, 180 centimeters. It's ridiculous how big it is. And she's working on it on her little coffee table, or not coffee table, her little work table that she sits on her you know, lounger, and she crafts, uh, she does her diamond painting. Different people do different things. Um, the important thing to do is to make sure that you are protecting your body from the stresses of diamond painting. If you're new to diamond painting, it is almost certain that you're going to get muscle aches, whether it's in, like for me, it was in my, in the back of my neck and down my back, it was like fire fire and that fire didn't go away when I stopped diamond painting uh, and that was because I was hunching over and it was also because my body was not used to being in the position that I needed to be in for diamond painting uh, and also because my posture was not great so you know the hunching so one of the first things I did was I went online to Amazon Okay, so I went online to Amazon and I bought this, uh, this back brace. Uh, well, it's a posture corrector. Let me get in view again. Let me just see what you can see. All right, I'm going to angle this differently again. Raise it up a little bit. I, th I hope you'll be able to see me. I hope you'll be able to see me. Just ignore the mess. This is my, this is where I diamond paint. And uh, I live in a little, well, a little condo. It's like 1,036 square, square um, feet. So uh, Amazon, it's, it's just this uh, stretchy, um, stretchy material. It's kind of, kind of foamy. I don't know. It, it's, it gives, and, and it's uh, it's adjustable with Velcro tabs. Oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, so it's got Velcro tabs, so it can fit pretty much anybody. I adjusted it to me. And then what you do is you put it on like a sweater. This is going to look ridiculous, okay? But again, I don't care who sees, like, nobody's going to see me like this. It is tight, it has to be tight, because it's got to help correct your posture. Now I'm wearing a hoodie, so I gotta pull that out. And then it's got these two straps here that uh, you wrap around your waist. And you tighten, well, it's a little above your waist, but you tighten that so that it's nice and tight. And then what it does, if it's properly tightened, is it actually makes it hard for you to hunch. Like this, I'm stretching the elastic like crazy. So it makes it almost impossible to do anything except keep your, your posture correct. Okay, so this, I hope you can see. This is the way I am comfortable wearing this thing. Now, if you wanna wear it for a long time, uh, you can wear it under your clothes. Like if you're wearing a loose sweater or something or a, an opaque shirt or something, nobody's ever going to know you're wearing this thing. Um, and then when you're sitting, now I've got to adjust the camera once again. I don't want 
make sure you can see me. Okay, so when you're sitting, if I, if I try to do this, I can feel it pulling. When I sit upright, even if I'm bending over, as long as my back is straight, I don't feel any pulling. It's very, very comfortable. Like you'll, it'll take a little while for you to get used to the straps pulling against your shoulders, but there's no pain. And so, and so that I found wearing this for a few hours a day while I was diamond painting helped to train me to sit using proper posture. Um, it probably would have been better if I had worn it all the time. Um, but uh, after a little while, I was actually able to stop wearing this altogether because my muscles adjusted to the positions that I was using when I was diamond painting. And so that's something that'll happen too, hopefully. Um, you can actually use this if you've got other posture problems and you just want to have a more upright posture. It would be great for that. And it comes off pretty easily. The hardest thing about it is finding the right adjustment for it at the beginning. Uh, but they send a little information sheet in English. And so it's actually, um, it's not that hard. Um, and like I say, you can wear it under your clothes. You can wear it over your clothes. I wore it over my clothes uh, just because. Um, what else is important? Okay. Uh, I'm, I know I'm kind of all over the map here. I had uh, an organized list that I wanted to uh, go through. And then last night while I was kidding up the Japanese princess, uh, the drills, uh, my cat, my dog got hold of my post-it pad and um, literally ate my homework. Uh, so I'm trying to remember uh, what all was on there. So that's why I'm kind of here and there and all over the place. Um, all right. So I talked about the pen. So I, I use the Silhouette pen. For me, the thickness of the Silhouette pen is enough to prevent my fingers from cramping and getting uncomfortable. Um, this is actually better. A big thick pen like this is actually better. And what I find with the Silhouette pen, I like it because I don't have to be like scooping new goop all the time. Like I don't have to be pulling new wax all the time. But uh, because I put one of the brass tips from one of my pink pens into my Silhouette pen, there is a... Um, chemical reaction that happens between the white uh, sticky stuff in the pen and the brass. So you get this black happening here and I believe that it softens the um, the brass. Whatever that whatever chemicals are in the sticky stuff in the silhouette pickup pen um, it has an effect on the brass tips because I drilled, I don't know, maybe 10, 9, 8, something like that, diamond paintings using a single drill pen uh, in the in the pink, in the pink. Hold on. Let's get that in focus. And uh, I never had to change the tip. As you'll see, like there's red wax that's been pushed through the teeny tiny little hole that's uh, right around there on the pen. And then there's blue because I was using blue tack for a little while. I don't know what's in there now. I think I emptied it. Yeah, I think I emptied it uh, because I wanted to start with fresh next time I used uh, this pill pen. But like it'll just keep on um, working forever. And there's there's no effect on the end of this pen. Whereas uh, I, this is the third or fourth tip that I've had to put into this Silhouette pen. And um, because they, they get soft, like the brass gets soft, and it actually starts to um, get mashed. And so it doesn't pick up the diamonds as well. And so you have to pull out the tip and put another tip in. And every time you do that, you're putting stress on the plastic uh, here 
And so my first silhouette pen broke here. It started having like stress fractures in the plastic and I had to replace it. Anyway, um, so I like my silhouette pen. It's super comfortable. I don't have to be changing the, the stuff in it all the time. I don't have to be picking up red wax or blue tack or anything, but it's got its downfalls. We get, like when I run out of silhouette pens, I don't think I'll buy any more. I think I'll go back to using just the, the pink, um, the pink pen with uh, the foam core uh, to, to make it uh, more comfortable to hold. Um, and so with this, I can done and paint for hours and I don't have any problem with my fingers getting sore. For a while, for a while, uh, probably for, I don't know, five or six diamond paintings, uh, squares, not rounds. I used my tweezers and that's, that's how I placed all my diamonds was with my tweezers. And um, so I'm using a set that I got from Evermoment. But what I did was I put uh, the cushies on them because what was happening was they were cutting into my finger and into uh, the webbing between my thumb and finger uh, because that's metal. And, oops, that's metal. It's not, it's not in focus, but it's metal. And, um, and they're not sharp edges. Like there's nothing sharp there, but the the constant pressing of that metal against the webbing here and here was causing pain and it was it was um it was sore so now i have the the grippies or the the soft things on there so that um wherever it touches like this my thumb it doesn't matter because my thumb is resting my thumb is resting on the flat part of the metal here and for this finger it doesn't matter too much either although I would have liked to have another piece of foam here but then the um, the things won't close because what was happening was with my finger pressing constantly for like because I would diamond paint for hours every day with my finger pressing against the um, pressing against the the metal I was actually getting um, numbness in my fingertip and in the tip of my thumb so that's why i have the grippy on there if i could put another one on here i would so i just try to hold it so that instead of it resting in between my two knuckles it rests on my knuckle um anyway or i have to change the positioning of it so i don't place my drills with a with the tweezers anymore because even though these helped, it didn't take away the problem of um, the pain. Like it took away the the um, the rubbing, having the the foam on here, but it didn't take away the the issue of the pain and didn't completely eliminate the numbness that I was getting in my fingers. And that numbness would be there for like the entire day whether I was diamond painting or not, and even whether I was diamond painting or not that day. So, and now the other thing is, I hold on really tight to my implements. So if you don't hold things quite as tight, you might not have the same problem. So I've gone back to using my tweezers uh, just to pick trash out of my container here and also to, you know, pick diamonds off the canvas if I need to. What else? Um, a magnifying glass. Okay, so I went out and bought uh, a fairly cheapy magnifying glass at the drugstore. It's got uh, a light in it, uh, but the battery is pretty much completely dead. And I couldn't be bought. Uh, yeah, I couldn't be bothered buying a new battery for it because with the light pad, I don't need it. Uh, it is good if you're, um, if you have trouble seeing the symbols, even with the light pad, it's good to have uh, the magnifying glass. Um, when I first started diamond painting, before I got the light pad, I used the magnifying glass all the time 
because without the light pad, it wasn't as clear what was on the canvas. So I would hold the light pad with one hand, or I would hold the uh, magnifying glass with one hand, and I would drill with the other. That was fine. That worked. The light pad is better. And now the only time I need the uh, magnifying glass is if, um, for example, if uh, there was some some of the tack from my pen that got on the canvas and I wasn't able to pick it off with the tweezers, I wasn't able to get it all off with the tweezers, then I'll use the magnifying glass to see if I can read the symbol. Because uh, sometimes, you know, they've got an M and an N. And it's like, is it an M or is it an N? Or sometimes, even with a light pad, uh, depending on what colors are being used, if you've got an O and a Q, it's sometimes pretty hard to see whether there's that little tail of the Q. So again, you might want to use a light uh, or a magnifying glass. Um, I tried buying the reading glasses that they sell at drugstores and dollar store and all over the place. And I found that I just wasn't able to find a pair that worked for me. Um, so for me, the magnifying glass is better. I did go on Amazon at one point and I bought uh, one of those, um, the sets that uh, I believe Natalia uses them and of uh, Lovecraft Forever. And I believe that Ella also has a pair uh, and you can switch out the lenses in them. Uh, I think they go from like 0.25 or 1.25 or something like that up to three. And so there's like five or six lenses that come in and you just snap them into the frames. Um, I tried those and that didn't work for me. So, um, so I'm good with the magnifying glass. It's low tech. Um, and you do need, you know, you need to hold it, but, uh, but that's fine for me. And it was, you know, super cheap. Um, what else? In terms of keeping yourself comfortable at all times. Um, like now, I don't have my diamond painting angled at such an extreme angle because, again, my body has gotten used to it. And, and just the way I've gotten into working on my work surface, I don't need to angle it so much. It's, it's probably on, you know, maybe that much of an angle, which, you know, over, over time, uh, you know, the longer it is, like it, it makes a difference. Like a pen would roll down it. Um, but, uh, but it's not like, it's not quite flat, but it's also not angled 45 degrees like this is, uh, let's see what else I've talked about vision. I've talked about fingers. Uh, oh, okay. So if you are working on a surface like this, that's angled like this, and if you don't trust blue tack to hold, like you can also stick it to the canvas, right? Um, <coughs> and even if you've got drills, you can stick it onto the drills that you've already done so that you've got your, your tray close to what you're drilling. Because the other thing you don't want to be doing is making all kinds of repetitive movements, you know, like this to reach into a drill tray to grab a diamond and then place it, reach in tray. That is asking for repetitive stress syndrome. Um, and it, it's tiring. Uh, you, you'll find that you won't be able to diamond paint for as long. So uh, what you can do is like stick it directly onto the diamonds. It's not going to hurt the diamonds. As long as your blue tack is clean, it, it will stick. It'll come off easily. It's not going to hurt the diamonds. And you can also stick it on the, on the wax paper. Uh, you can, whoops. Like I say, my blue tack is not that clean. Um, but you can stick it on, on your table, whatever. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can hold it in your hand, okay? And, and that way you can keep it flatter. There is a tray that you can get, I think it's, I think it's um, printed on a 3D printer. I think Archer's Arts might sell it. I don't have one, but it's a big tray. 
Um, it's a big tray and you can buy them with finger holes so that if you're clumsy like I am, you actually stick your fingers through the holes that like there, there are little rings on each side of the tray and you stick your finger, and the trays are quite big. So you stick your fingers through the holes and, and then you don't have to worry about dropping the tray because your fingers are in the rings and you're not going to drop that tray. And then you can just, again, you can hold it and just diamond paint. Um, what else? Uh, another alternative, if you don't like the foam roller idea, if you don't like the silhouette pen idea, uh, you can find all kinds of videos on YouTube about how to make custom drill pens. So uh, I haven't actually watched it, but I've seen many times in my recommended videos, a video for um, how to make a custom pen uh, using dollar store uh, pens. The thing is, you have to find a pen that has an opening, you know, where the, uh, where the, um, the ink piece comes out, uh, that is the same size as the, the brass end of your drill pen. If they're not the same size, you can't use that pen. So uh, the other day I ran out of ink with a pen that I was using and I thought, oh, maybe, and it's a comfortable pen to hold for a long time. And so I thought, oh, maybe I'll, I can stick one of the ends of my drill pens in there. I couldn't because it, it wasn't like it, it was too small a hole. Um, so you have to get the right size hole. There's all kinds of videos that you can find online about how to customize your drill pen. Uh, from just a regular ballpoint pen. Uh, there are, you can also go online and they have ergonomic pens, okay? Uh, and so they make drill pens. There's people out there, and I don't know who they are, but you can find them. If you search on, uh, on um, probably Etsy, but certainly search on YouTube for custom pens. Uh, Rachel Ray just recently did a video, which I did watch all the way through, and she had got a customized pen, and I think it had two, like, humps in it, and um, so it was made ergonomically for the way that, you know, a person would hold a pen, so it had a, a lump where it would rest on your finger, and it had a, a lump, like a, a divot, where it would rest on your, the webbing between your um, thumb and forefinger. And it had a single placer on one end and some sort of multi-placer on the other end. So depending on what you want to spend, there's all kinds of tools out there. This is free. And like I say, works for me. Um, might not work for you. What else? There's pretty much nothing that you can do to a diamond painting that will hurt it in the end. Um, I was watching Diggy 415 and she had a fairly large, I think it might have been like a 40 or 50 by 50. Um, and it's a fire, fireman sort of, I don't know, it, it's got like the axe handles and the fireman's helmet and I think it's got some boots or something like that. There's a lot of red and black and gold and stuff in it. And um, she spilled some sort of oil. I don't know if it was like lamp oil or some essential oil that, you know, she had to make her place smell nice. I can't remember. I didn't see that part. But she was actually running into issues where um, the oil had taken away all the stickiness of the glue and her diamonds were sliding across it. Uh, when she tried to place them, they just wouldn't stay in place. So she came up with a workaround for how to deal with that. Whatever the problem is that you're having with your canvas or with um, whatever it is that you're experiencing with diamond painting, you can be assured that there is somebody out there who's had the same problem and has figured out a way to fix it and that, that one of those people at least has posted a video there's multiple videos out there. Um, like at one time, I thought there was only one video on what to do if you get paper stuck to your canvas. No, there's a 
there's a ton of videos out there on how to get paper stuck that got stuck to your canvas off your canvas. Sweet, short and sweet version. You use a, a baby wipe or a, like a, what do you call it? Clorox cloth, whatever. And you just, you just rub at the paper until it comes off. Like wet the paper, rub it, the, like rub the paper until like little fibers of paper come off. Eventually all the paper will be gone. You can pick it off using tweezers and then uh, let your canvas dry and it's as good as new. I have used that technique a number of times because I have gotten paper stuck to my canvases on at least three occasions. Uh, you try not to, but it happens. Uh, what else? This canvas I cut when I was opening it. For those of you who watched the opening, um, I cut, I was using a new knife and that I wasn't really familiar with. And so I actually cut it here. It's not like the cut didn't go all the way across. It, it's like boop, boop, and boop. Um, and, you know, I didn't even worry for a minute about that. It was like, silly me, that was a dumb thing. But no harm done, because you can't really hurt these things. Uh, and when I mount this, it's going to be perfectly fine nobody's ever gonna know and um there's a video that i that i watched uh, by allison rosen who um actually took a humongous diamond painting that she was working on i think it was like a dollhouse or something like that if i recall correctly and she cut it up into squares and uh then she put all the squares back together when she was done and glued them glued them down on uh on her uh whatever it was stretch canvas or poster board or whatever it was that she was uh, using as a backing for it. Um, you couldn't tell that she had cut the canvas up. As long as you cut along the uh, lines, it doesn't matter. Um, you can put it all back together if you're patient and, and painstaking about getting it just so. Um, yeah, so I think, I think, that covers pretty much everything I wanted to say. I talked about the pain. Yeah, you'll probably have pain for a little while. And it won't go away magically, but it will go away if you treat your body with care. Um, do you need the posture corrector? Probably not. It might be something that, you know, if you want to spend, I think it was like 30 bucks or 35 bucks Canadian. So it would probably be about 20 bucks American. Um, 20, 21, $22 American. Um, and I'll put a link to the posture corrector down below. I'll put a link to the, um, the tabletop easel down below. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting a link to clips because you can find them anywhere. Um, I'll put a link to the silhouette pen down below just in case you're interested in that. Uh, and I'll put both Amazon.com and Amazon.ca links uh, for these things, uh, because I know most of my viewers are probably in the States. Uh, the light packs, just go on AliExpress or Amazon and enter uh, light pad. Why is it not turning off? Okay, it's not there. Now it's off. Um... I got a cheap one. I think it was like 20 bucks Canadian. So again, it's going to be like maybe 15 bucks American, something like that. Uh, there's different ones. Like I have one that I got uh, for free because I made a big order from um, Paint with Diamonds. And um, and it, it actually has like you press multiple times and it gets brighter or turns off. Where this one, you just hold your finger down and it just gradually gets brighter or um, or dims. Uh, I actually like the, the other one, which I think is cheaper. I actually like the other one better. Um, because this one I find, you touch it and suddenly your thing is off. Or, you know, if the diamond painting sits on it in just the wrong way, suddenly it, it's it's turned off or so dim and because it happens gradually you don't necessarily know and you think there's something wrong with your eyes anyway um i don't know 
I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Now I had actually planned on starting to drill this on this setup. Um, but because my foam roller is not ideal, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, what I am going to do though, is I'm going to take this apart. And I am going to to set up. I have another series that's going at the same time called the Huacan Stained Glass Flower. Uh, and I shot the uh, organizing video for that today. So this is my Huacan Stained Glass Flower. It is 40 colors, 45 by 60 centimeters. So look at this. Just adjust this. It fits perfectly on that workspace. And um, and so these strips are they're four inches, which is a little bit more than what I'm comfortable with. Um and I was working like the the, the last two can that I did was also four inch strips. And I didn't like that because what happens is when I'm drilling up here, the this part of my hand is resting on the, um, oh my goodness, words, Rose. It's resting on the adhesive. So what I might actually do is, is cut this in, uh, like I might cut a one inch strip and then cut a two inch strip here and then a one inch strip, and then there's three inches, and then um, three, cut another uh, strip here, so that as I'm pulling it back, I am working a three inch strip at a time, because I do want to uh, work it on this surface, uh, because I'm gonna be working both diamond paintings at the same time. I've never done two diamond paintings at the same time, but because, I ordered two diamond paintings in a single order from Huacan, and the one that I finished was miss like it ran out of drills. Um, Huacan told me to finish the other diamond painting so that if it was missing drills too, I could order all of them together for the two paintings because that way I'd get them free because they'll only send one free missing drill shipment per order, not per painting per order. So anyway, so that's why I'm going to work on both of them uh, at the same time. And since I've got this, um, this uh, easel, I can, I can work on it here. And so what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do this, like this half of it, and I'm going to flip it over and drill this half of it. No problem. The only thing I have to keep in mind is, you know, if some of these symbols, let's see. Nah, none of these symbols will matter. Uh, I, on the other one that I'm working, the Japanese princess, it, um, it actually has symbols that, like it's got the two bracket, like the two parentheses, the right bracket and the left bracket. Well, when you flip those over, and they're both pink. So when you flip over the diamond painting, which I will be doing, uh, because I'll be turning that puppy um, to do the top uh, 12 inches first, um, or 9 inches, 9 or 12 inches, I can't remember. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to remember that there are some symbols that are opposite. So anyway, but I've got that all sorted out as well. I'm babbling at this point, and I don't think you want to hear me babble. So I'm just going to say, I hope you found this informative. Um, if there's anything that didn't make sense to you, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to address it. Either in a follow-up video 
uh, while I'm working on one of the paintings or uh, just with a response comment. Um, if you have like a specific question about your project, what I would suggest that you do is send me an email. My email address is in the description text down below. Uh, send me pictures of your setup uh, and of the diamond painting and of any particular questions you might have and um, and I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Um, what else? You know how to reach me. Just reach out. If there's anything that you want that I haven't been able to provide yet, just reach out to me and I will do my best to help you out. Okay. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for uh, stopping in for the visit and for uh, listening as I went through this sadly unscripted uh, tutorial uh, with less than ideal materials. Um, but, you know, hey, you can make anything work in diamond painting. That's the nice thing. You can make anything work. Uh, and uh, I hope you come back and visit again. Set, uh, why don't you subscribe to my channel so that uh, you can see all the upcoming videos and you can go back and check my backlist. I have established a playlist for both the Japanese princess and the Huacan stained glass flower. Uh, this video will be in the Japanese princess playlist, which I will attach in at the end of this video. Uh, it'll be one of the, one of the, clickable pictures that you can uh, that you can click on uh, in the last half half a minute or so of this video um, yeah so subscribe to my channel like this video please uh, leave me comments send me email I do Twitter but I haven't been doing it recently so um, I probably will again it's just I've been so busy with so much else that's going on in my life right now I kind of neglect Twitter uh, but I do hope to get back to that. So you can follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.